see Fibble Tip. Look at this. I, I feel like we could hit that dynamic. Ooh, me, me. Well, I mean, the, the transformation machine, it, it won't be that bad. Me, 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 me. I mean, look how cool they look. We, we can hit that same synergy. Uh -huh. Let's give it a shot. Fibble Tip, uh, this is beautiful. I love it. <laughs> But yes, welcome to Alrund and Haka. We officially have Stormcrow out of the command zone, and I'm very excited. So let's go and cover the commanders, and we'll jump into as far as the mechanics and uh, the different ways to build the stack. So we have Alrund. It's going to get plus one, plus one uh, for each card in your hand. Then for each foretold card that you have in exile. Then at the beginning of your end step, choose a card type. Reveal the top two cards of your library. Put all cards of the chosen type in your hand. The rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now on the back side, we have Haka. Um, flying whenever it enters the... Excuse me whenever it deals combat damage to a player return it to its hand then scry two so we have this really unique super flavorful card you know we have this god over here we have this storm crow which is going to be almost kind of like it's scouting animal or it's spirit animal whatever you want to call it so you have this really unique aspect to where you have two different things um mechanically they're two different creatures but you're going to be able to utilize them together so let's say that we have hawk on the battlefield um we swing in connect for damage we get that scry two then we're at a point in the game to where we can cast our rune on the back end we get that down let's say that we set up the scry we're going to be able to draw those two cards when you have something where flavor and mechanics meet in this beautiful play style, um, this is a really fun, especially if you're not mono blue. If you've never been a mono blue player, um, I would suggest giving this deck a try. You know, just simply having this mechanical aspect. One of the things that mono blue can suffer from sometimes is, you know, you think of mono blue control and you think of draw go, you know, draw go, your turn. And then you just hold up counter spells. Um, running this in like a mono blue control shell, it gives you the opportunity just to have something to do. Um, one of the things that control decks, and especially if you're new to control decks, what they want to have is something that is problematic. You know, you want to get something on the battlefield that's not too strong to where everybody tries to get rid of it, but at the same time, you can slowly generate value over the course of the game. So, you know, just simply just swinging in with Haka, um, getting that scry going, then having Alrun come down on the back end, getting that card draw going, that's really going to help you build up card advantage over the course of the game, and just slowly kind of threaten your opponents you know there's gonna be a lot of times where maybe they don't want to burn some early removal on Haka um, simply just being able to get it out there have it be a problem it's gonna allow you to kind of build up your resources towards the end of the game so long story short if you've never been a control player if you've never been a mono blue player um, you might want to give this deck a shot you know it's kind of fun to have this card advantage engine out of the command zone and at the same time it's really going to teach you how to use the top part of your library as a resource to your advantage you know now since we are in mono blue let's go and get it out of the way that's going to be counter spells you want to run some sort of counter package in your mono blue deck now how many counter spells you go versus card advantage that's totally up to you but if you're going to be running counters in here you want to have some sort of extra value with those counter spells so arcane denial remand delay these are all high impact counter spells that cost really low it's going to allow you to counter something in the early game or in the late game still have some sort of impact you know remand it's beautiful for a deck like this and um, that's exactly what you need to do counter something get that card draw then maybe hit it with the mana leak or something like counter spell and then of course with the three converted mana cost counter spells you still want to run something that gives you that nice incremental value. So like Admiral's Order, um, this is very situational, but you know we have a commander that cares about swinging in and attacking. So Admiral's Orders is going to give you that chance to have a free, count, not necessarily a free counter spell, but a blue mana counter spell. If you swung in with Haka, um, you're trying to go for Alrund on the battlefield to get that scry and that card draw. Um, having Admiral's Orders active um, is definitely going to be a good thing. You know, It just kind of hits home on the, if you have a counter spell in your mono, blue deck make sure that it gives you some sort of extra value because with admiral's order you're still going to be able to counter something on their turn but it's going to make it to where you know if you're going for that second main phase play it's going to help you kind of have some cheap uh, counter magic um, same thing with dissolve you know giving that scry one that's going to help go towards that in step trigger and then neutralize you know let's say that there's something on the top of our library that we don't want to draw into or it's going to stop that draw chain with our rune um, simply being able to cycle for two is really going to allow you to draw that card and set up something like that 
that. So long story short, whatever sort of counter spells you decide to run in there, make sure they give you some sort of incremental value and they have some sort of early game and late game effect. That's very important. So now that counter spells are out of the way, the other thing that you definitely want to incorporate in your deck building is mana rocks. You do not want to skimp on these. Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, uh, Worn Power Stone, Thran Dynamo, Gilded Lotus, make sure you have mana rocks one of the things that you're trying to do in mono blue is make sure that when you get to the late game you have more than enough mana to either tap out draw a ton of cards to kind of refuel or have some sort of counter war um, and not having enough mana into the late game is really going to slow you and uh, not allow you to close the game on especially you know if we're going for this mechanical commander uh, we're trying to swing it with a bird we're trying to cast it on the back end for five total mana um, simply just being able to make your land drops and get these mana rocks out it's really going to help push you into that late game and help you kind of control for that now as far as the deck building of the actual deck outside of counter spells outside of mana rocks those are you know definitely given in a deck like this you want to incorporate some sort of top of the library effects we have soothsaying search for ascanta think tank you want to be able to manipulate the top part of your library before you swing in that way you can try to decide all right do we want to swing in with haka go for our rune on the back end you know it's just simply being able to know what's on top of your library might help kind of set up some sort of line of play that you want to go for or you just may want to skip that turn and you can draw something else um jace's sanctum is going to give us that nice reduced cost and kind of give us that uh, that scry effect um also with elgrith this is one of those cards that you can build a deck around Elgrith like this you know getting that scry it's gonna make you draw cards it is six mana like I said you need mana rocks in here if you do get Elgrith on the battlefield that's gonna be a lot of fun you're gonna be able to turn all those scries into card draw um, outside of these cards something like ancestral knowledge in a deck like this is absolutely wonderful um, this is basically kind of like a two mana dig through time enchantment um, you're having this enter the battlefield look at the top 10 cards you can just stack you know really whatever you want depending on how your you know board state develops and then you don't really have to worry about that cumulative upkeep because if you're going for our rune on the back end you're gonna be able to draw those two cards so you can just let that knowledge go away uh, depending on how you want to stack it up and uh, you know like I mentioned if you're new to mono blue it may seem kind of weird looking at the top 10 cards and exiling them um, one of the things that you're trying to do in a deck like this is dig into your deck as deeply as possible, as quickly as possible, whether it's card draw or just simply looking at a raw volume of cards. Uh, Mono Blue wants to have the top part of your library being an extension of your hand. So something like Ancestral Knowledge, you may end up losing, you know, eight of those 10 cards, but you found what you needed in that moment. So that's really where you want to kind of take, make sure you have some sort of top of the library effect in your deck building. Um, Sensei's Divining Top and Long Term Plans, once again, these allow you to manipulate the top part of your library, keep that card advantage flowing, and try to set up some of those end of turn card draws. So when it comes to card advantage in a deck like this, you definitely want to incorporate some sort of extra theme or something like that so surveil is going to work out beautiful in a deck like this um, you have tempo cards like unexplained disappearance and mission briefing um, simply being able to do something that you would normally want to do and get that extra surveil tag along definitely gonna be a really good thing um, you can run enhanced surveillance if you want to in a deck like this um, there's not really a ton of probably times where you're gonna get it on the battlefield and be able to hold on to unexplained disappearance and mission briefing um, probably not going to put it in there but if you go super heavy on surveil that's going to definitely gonna allow you to get that extra value as you go for the haka our rune line of play trying to get that card advantage or that card draw at your end step and then stuff like night veil sprite and sinister sabotage you know like we mentioned earlier with the counter spells we want our counter spells to have some sort of extra value tagged along uh, being able to answer a threat with sinister sabotage get that surveil it's going to help us out on the second main phase and then with night veil sprite there might be times where we're not really wanting to swing in with haka but simply being able to have have sprite on the battlefield swinging in you know especially if you're playing at a multiplayer table um, there's probably always going to be somebody that you can at least swing into and simply just being able to get that surveil in your attack step potentially swing with haka at somebody else you know you're gonna end up with you know let's say that you have the night veil sprite trigger you deal that combat damage you're gonna have that scry trigger so you basically you're kind of looking at like three cards on top of your library then you can set up some card draw without rune so depending on how heavy you want to go surveil you can run enhanced surveillance but i might skip that for right now but once again you know if you're running card advantage if it's going to give you a little bit of extra value you definitely want to incorporate that in your deck building now of course you know outside of the enchantments that we talked about manipulating the top part of your library affects instant speed ways to kind of interact with it brainstorm scroll rack telling time you just want to be able to 
diversify you know if you've got card draw if it can interact with the top part of your library you know let's say you end up going brainstorm you don't really hit a good scry draw three cards put two back on top that's going to allow you to set up a really nice in-step trigger without runes same thing with telling time you can maybe look at the top part of your library put one on top one goes to your hand uh, mystic sanctuary and uh, mancer these are also going to be really good options to where let's say that you do know what's on top of your library you play one of these that goes on top that's going to allow you to kind of set up that chain so we can sequence to get that card draw and of course some of your sorcery speed card advantage tigam scheming contingency plan dream cash once again you know if you're running card advantage in a deck like this you want to be able to look at the highest volume of cards on top of your library and control that volume of cards and make sure that you can go for that card advantage or that card draw at the end step um like we did mention you want to make sure you want to run mana rocks in here um one of the main things that mono blue is really going to push itself into the late game or at least kind of try to win the late game is being able to tap out for something like pull from tomorrow thos's intervention stroke of genius um there's no better feeling of uh, being able to tap this this down for six seven eight card draw it's going to put you in a position to where you may not win the game but you're going to have all the answers that you need you can chain into some other stuff you know let's say that we go for stroke of genius then we run into factor fiction chemistry's inside any of the other ones thirst for knowledge thirst for meaning impulse whatever that is you know it's very important that if you're playing mono blue instead of just running counterspell dot deck you run a lot of card advantage card draw options and really kind of diversify that but also you know pull from tomorrow thoughts intervention stroke of genius if there's any time that i'm running a deck where the commander you know we do have our rune it costs five mana and um, we've got the bird costing two there's times where we're going to cast the bird then cast our rune um, you want to make sure that you're at least running if you're running big mana especially in mono blue you want to run pull from tomorrow thoughts intervention you want to be able to get as much card draw as quickly as possible and these also allow you to kind of go for you know let's say you have a counter spell in your hand you get to somebody's instep you just kind of go for a counter spell check you're like stroke of genius for eight is it good like if it's good you draw a bunch of cards or you force them to kind of spend some resources then you get back into your top of the library kind of card advantage game plan so they serve two threats you know it's almost like a win condition stop this if you don't it's going to be really bad for you or you can force people to kind of use things that they're holding on to as you get into the late game now as far as the creature base um since we do have a commander that cares about swinging in you know kind of often and cheaply um you kind of want to mimic that in your creature base and also if you're new to building mono Mono blue or kind of a control deck um, your creature count is going to be really low for a deck like this so if you're running a creature in there you want to make sure that it's at least going to be on point with your commander or just kind of fit in there with that overall theme so stuff like artificers assistant um, we have a historic spell out of the commander for two so let's say that we go for artificers assistant we're getting our mana rocks on the battlefield we go for our commander um, those scries are going to add up over the course of the game and of course you know it has flying so it's going to allow you to you know let's say if you're running some sort of equipment option in your deck um, simply being able to get those scries over the course of the game then put some sort of equipment on it in the late game to still get that value is going to be a very good thing um, same thing with mind shrieker you know we are playing a deck that cares about the top part of our library so with the mind shrieker activation we can use that to our advantage to kind of pump it up or if you simply just want to dump mana into it start targeting other people's decks swing in either way you know we have a creature that wants to fly we have a commander that wants to fly excuse me simply just kind of having this extra diversified flying threat that goes along with it's going to help you kind of get into the late game uh, same thing with siren storm tamer you know it's going to give you the option of protecting haka very cheaply once again you know we have mono blue flyers it's one of the best ways to kind of get in that nice value as the course of the game goes on outside of the low converted mana cost stuff like thrix and dream eater you don't want to go super heavy on these high converted mana cost flyers but you want to have something that you can flash in at your opponent's in step that's going to be a threat and it's going to help you close the game out um, if you're running you know the five and six converted mana cost you're probably wanting to pick two or three of them and that's going to be about it um, if you kind of top in load a lot of really big creatures in a deck like this it's going to be really hard uh, to push a solid control game plan so you know just pick out two or three of your favorite closers get it in there and that's really going to work out and of course with the three converted mana cost there's a lot of options that still give you that flying threat uh, with nimble obstruction it's it's going to give you that extra you know activated ability where you can counter something or triggered ability uh, brazen borrow is going to give you that option of having a flying threat or you can send something back to their hand and then medillion click that's going to give you the option of kind of messing with your opponent's hand so once again with all these creatures they fit on theme with the what we're wanting to do and that's kind of swinging with flying creatures but at the same time they each bring something 
extra to the table. So, like I mentioned, mono blue, you're going to have a low creature count. So if you're running a creature in there, make sure it has some sort of high impact. That way you can close the game out. And of course, if you have access to the, any of the mono blue all-stars, Snapcaster, Thada, Jays, Baral, Kira, these are all great options for a deck like this. Like I mentioned in the beginning, you're playing mono blue. You just want to get these early problematic creatures out there you know let's say we lead off with jace your opponents are not really going to want jace out there so they're probably going to spend some removal on it um we get thada out there start swinging in stealing people's mana rocks they want to deal with that that's going to help you get to the late game you get these creatures out there that's going to give you that extra value until they deal with it and then you can use your commander and that mechanical aspect of swinging in and getting that card advantage to close it out now you don't want to go super heavy with equipment, but you do want to have some sort of extra equipment in your deck to kind of play around with. Um, Bloodforge Battle Axe is a great option. It's not super high impact, but if you can get Hakka in there and get Bloodforged on there, start making copies of it, put one on Mind Shrieker and one on... Uh... The other bird, Artificer's Assistant, make that one happy, whatever. Um, it's going to allow you to basically get that extra value from swinging in during the combat step. Um, Dousing Dagger is going to be pretty easy for us to trigger in a deck like this. Uh, Mask of Memory, once again, you know, we want that slow and steady card advantage over the course of the game. Uh, Mask of Memory is really going to help us do that. Um, cards like Uazama's Jitte and Rune Chanter's Pike. You just, if you're running equipment, it needs to be high impact. With Uwazama's Jitte, it's going to work out perfectly in a deck like this. Uh, we swing in with Haka, we get those charge counters on there. If Haka goes back to our hand, um, Uwazama's Jitte has the activated ability on the equipment right there. It doesn't need to be equipped to go for those charge counters, which is... It's always baffling, but anyway, it's going to work out perfectly for a deck like this where our commander is going to go back to our hand. Um, and of course, you know, Sword of Fire and Ice, Feast and Famine, Sinew and Steel. You just want to have something that you can get down, be a problem. You don't have to run all the swords in here. I would probably just cap it off at Fire and Ice, Feast and Famine, and Sinew and Steel. Um, just simply just connecting with Feast and Famine. You're going to get that extra second main phase of untapping all your mana. Um, Sinew and Steel is going to allow you to do some kind of Planeswalker control. And then Sword of Fire and Ice, once again, is going to keep up with that card advantage. But that is going to be it for the deck. Um, super excited. When you have a... If you've never seen Grim Grim before, um, Grim Grim is a beautiful card that is flavor wise and mechanic they just meet and it just makes for a really fun deck and this is that same deck you know you do have the aspect of getting the storm crow down swinging in getting that scouting report going then our room comes down draw some cards um, if you never built mono blue or if you've built like a cutthroat mono blue this sounds like a really good commander swap for you um, simply just giving yourself some sort of something to do in the game other than counter counter other people's stuff on the board you know especially if you're a spike or something like that um just simply just having this little value engine that you're like all right let's see if we can get in with the storm uh, the storm crow get in get that card advantage or in step it's just going to give you something to do and it's just a lot of fun to do that it's probably going to be one of those decks where even if you lose simply just getting a couple different connections getting that different card advantage going um seeing if you can set it up is going to be a lot of fun but that's going to be it for the video in fact if you enjoyed it like and subscribe thanks bye